All right, we continue with the word of the Most High and the Yahushai, the mystery of Amashiach. Uh, we're going to go into Isaiah, the 51st chapter, and... Verse 4. Let's read verse 3. For the Most High shall comfort Zion. And Zion he defines in verse 16 of Isaiah the 51st chapter. And I have put my words in thy mouth, and I have covered thee in the shadow of mine hand, that I may plant the heavens and lay the foundations of the earth, and say unto Zion, Thou art my people. So, we understand, and we know the most highest people are the 12 tribes of Israel. So it says in verse 3 of Isaiah, the 51st chapter, For the most high shall comfort Zion. He's going to comfort we the 12 tribes of Israel. He will comfort all her waste places. And he will make her wilderness like Eden. This is what we're looking forward to. See, we're going to make our wilderness like the Garden of Eden. And her desert like the Garden of the Most High. Joy and gladness shall be found therein. Thanksgiving in the voice of melody. Singing and music. Hearken unto me. Listen to me. My people. Yasharala. Israelites. And give ear unto me, O oh, my nation, my nation. That's very personal. My nation. For a law shall proceed from me. And I will make my judgment to rest for a light of the people. He said a law going to proceed from him. And he's going to make his judgment uh, to rest for a light of the people. He said my righteousness is near. That's his laws. The righteousness, we need to find it over and over again. Do you know what I mean? Yes, we have to do. My righteousness is near. What's his righteousness? Let's find out. And I guess we have to keep reviewing so to stick in Israel's mind. Deuteronomy 6.25 And it shall be our righteousness if, which is a condition, we observe to do all these commandments before the Most High our power as He hath commanded us. If we do His commandments. Isaiah 51 and 6, verse 5. Isaiah 51 and 5. My righteousness is near. His laws, His commandments is near. My salvation is gone forth. Powers and authority of salvation is gone forth. And my arms shall judge the people. His arms going to judge the people. Mashiach Yavashai and the angels going to judge the people. We come back with 200 million angels. The owls shall wait upon me. And on mine arms shall they trust. They're going to trust in Mashiach Yavashai. Both sides arms. Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look upon the earth beneath. For the heavens shall vanish away like smoke. And the earth shall wax old like a garment, which we can see now in the last days. Especially when you go to some of these old cities like New York and so forth. And they that dwell therein shall die in like manner. But my salvation... His powers and authority on this earth shall be forever. It's going to be forever. And my righteousness, his commandments, his laws shall not be abolished. For you to say that you're not under them now, he said his righteousness, his laws, his commandments shall not be abolished. It's not going to be abolished. Verse 9. Awake, awake, put on strength. O arm of the Most High, put on strength, O angel of the Most High, O spirit of the Most High, O Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. We've been going over the mystery of Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. Put on strength, O arm of the Most High. Awake, <clears throat> as in the ancient days, in the generation of old. 
Art thou not it that have cut Rahab, or wounded the dragon? Art thou not it which hath dried the sea, the waters of the great deep, that have made the depths of the sea a way for the ransom to pass over? Look at Exodus 14. Exodus 14 chapter. And verse 19. This is when we came out of Egyptian captivity going across the Red Sea. Listen to what it says. Exodus, this is our Exodus 14 and 19. And the angel of the Most High, the Spirit of the Most High, Hamashiach Yahushai, the Son of the Most High, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them, went behind the camp. And the pillar of the cloud went be from before their face and stood behind them. So it went from before their face and went behind us. And it came between the camp of the Egyptians that was chasing us. Pharaoh and his chariots, the Egyptians, and the camp of Israel. And it was a cloud and darkness to them. But it gave light by night to these so that the one came not near the other all the night. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Most High, through the angel of the Most High, caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning, watch, the Most High looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians and took off their chariot wheels that they drave them heavily. So that the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel. For the Most High, while Mashiach Yahushai, the angel of the Most High, fighteth for them against the Egyptians. See? So, you see, that's, that's the story that's being told here in Isaiah. Isaiah 51 and 10. Art thou not it which have dried the sea? The waters of the depth, great depth that have made the depths of the sea a way for the ransom to pass over. You got to see this. Verse 9, awake, awake, put on strength, O arm of the Most High. See? O arm of the Most High. The Most High get the orders and he makes it go out through the angel. We know that this angel was Hamashiach Kelshai. Beautiful. Look at Isaiah 59, the 59th chapter. And verse 16. <clears throat> and he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore his arm brought salvation unto him. His arm brought salvation unto him. And his righteousness, it sustained him. Well, you put on righteousness, which is keeping the laws of the Most High, the commandments of the Most High, as a breastplate, and a helmet of salvation upon his head. And he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing. He coming back for vengeance, y'all. To set up righteousness on this earth. He put on the garments of vengeance for clothing. and was clad with zeal as a cloak. He had that zeal of the Most High. It's never going to leave him. He's going to bring it forth. Uh, you see, if you don't really... It's, it's a shame because a lot of our people, they, 
they caught up in religions and the church that don't really deal with what's getting ready to go down. And they're gonna be caught in the trick back. It's sad. With a lot of our family members, they're not gonna make it. Cause they think it's they think it's this is not real. Look at um, First Thessalonians fifth chapter. First Thessalonians five and two. See, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Most High and the Messiah shall shine, so cometh as a thief in the night. You don't know when the thief is coming. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction come up upon them. As travaileth upon a woman with, with child, and they shall not escape. A woman with a child, the contractions, they be far apart. It happens, it's closer and closer until the baby is born. That's what he's giving analysis of. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness. You're not supposed to be in ignorance, not knowing that that day should overtake you as a thief. We're supposed to be knowing the prophecies and looking at what's going on, seeing the breast of what's going on in the world to see that these prophecies are true. So we're not in darkness. You're all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. This is the elect. Those that's really going to tap into the spiritual awareness of what this Bible is talking about. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. See, a lot of people, you know, a lot of people sleep and think about the ones that have been brought into the truth to learn the truth, and then they went away, went astray. They really going to get it. This is all they have to look forward to. And then they'll tell me, how the most I going to take them out? For they that sleep, sleep in the night. They that sleep, they sleeping in the night. This is the time of night. This is the time of darkness now. Gross darkness to people, it says in Isaiah 60, chapter, the second verse. Gross ignorance. Whereas the people turn to darkness instantly because they don't understand how everything on this earth is operating. Satan told the Mashiach that was shy, all has been given to me. All you gotta do is bow down and worship me. So people worship him. Satan they don't even realize they're working the, worshiping the devil and Satan. It's just natural. Because he wants you to be miserable. And misery loves company. Or he wanna act like everything is cool. Away from being in the light, in darkness. And that's so you know, you're going to suffer a heinous, terrible death. Or sickness that you can't really get rid of. It says, therefore let us not sleep, verse 6, as do others. But let us watch and be sober, be focused. And don't be no alcoholic or no drunk or no drug addict or whatever it is that you're dealing with. You got to cut that loose and get help to get off of it. You gotta watch and be sober. What you watching for? You watching for these prophecies that's written in this Bible to come through. But they that sleep, sleep in the night. Ain't no more darkness than it is now. Anything you can think of and can't think of, the most like some of the things that they're doing, you're supposed to be thinking about it. Even speaking on it is so wicked. But they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that be drunken are drunken in the night. See? You're not sober, you're drunken in the night. Talking about this lifestyle that's on this earth and the wickedness, all the wickedness that's going on, makes it dark and vile and disgusting and abominable to the Most High. But let us who are of the day, who's rolling the light, the light is the commandments of the Most High. Don't get it twisted, it's just hip talk. Keeping the commandments of the Most High, be sober. Don't be no drunkard and be focused. Putting on the breastplate of faith and love. Love is the keeping of the commandments. And faith is the faith in the Most High. 
and for a helmet was the way you think, the hope of salvation. For the most have not appointed us to wrath. The one third of the twelve tribes of Israel, the elect, but to obtain salvation by our power, our master, Hamashiach, Yahweh who died for us, the twelve tribes of Israel, repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. That, whether we wake or sleep, whether we're alive or we have given up the spirit, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. See? So that's very important. That's that breastplate of righteousness that we're supposed to be having on. Isaiah 59 and 19. So shall they fear the name of the Most High from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun to the east. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, they're going to come in like a flood. The spirit of the Most High shall lift up a standard against him. That's why it tells you in Revelation 12 and 12. I told you once, I told you twice, I told you many a times. Revelation 12 and 12, therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe, destruction to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. So he know he got a short time, so we're going to get. He's going to try and get. Verse 17. And the dragon was wroth, which is the devil, Satan, the beast, Esau, the, the serpent. And the dragon was wroth with the woman, which represents the 12 tribes of Israel, the remnant. And went to make war with the remnant of her seed. They're going to go to attempt to make war with the remnant of her seed. That's a one third of the most highest chosen people. Which keep the commandments of the most high. And have a testimony of Amashiach, Yahweh Shai. Right? Like we're going through the mystery of Amashiach right now. To know him better. So they're going to come down on those. Because the people in the, the Christian churches, they're not teaching the commandments of the most high. They say we're not under the law. We're the mercy and grace. Jesus nailed all, all the sins in, in, on the cross. They feel they can do whatever they want to do, and he's going to forgive them for whatever it is that they do, they think. But you better think again. That's why it says, for those that are keeping his commandments, having faith in the Mashiach Yahweh Shai, Isaiah 59 and 19, so shall they fear the name of the Most High from the west and his glory, from the rising of the sun, when the enemy shall come in like a flood. We just read about him. He's coming in like a flood. To bring wrath or woe unto those that are keeping the commandments of the Most High. But, the end result is this. The spirit of the Most High, Mashiach Yahweh Shai, who's coming not as a man to judge and make war, shall lift up a standard against him. You lift up a standard against him. And the Redeemer shall come to Zion and unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, said the Most High. See? That's why we got to keep these commandments. And he tells, he told us in 2nd uh, Ezra 2, 26. 2nd Ezra 2 and 26. As for the service whom I have given thee, the service that he has given them, there shall not one of them perish. Just like we just read about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel. See, there shall not one of them perish, for I will require them from among thy number. My Lord, yeah. That's why the Most High also told us in Job 5.19. This is what we're looking forward to. This is what all this work is for. Our names be written in the book of life, and this salvation can come to us. Job 5.19, he shall deliver thee in six troubles. Six troubles. Yeah. In seven, there shall no evil touch thee. In famine, he shall redeem thee from death. 
and in war from the power of the sword. Go back to 2nd Ezra 2 and 27 to 29. 2nd Ezra, the second chapter, 27 to 29. Be not weary. He said, don't, don't be troubled. For when the day of trouble and heaven is cometh, others shall weep and be sorrowful. But thou shalt be merry and have abundance. This is what he said. He said, we're going to have abundance. The heathen shall envy thee. These other nations outside of the 12 tribes, they're going to envy us. Most I will if it's us. But they shall be able to do nothing against thee. Said the Most High. They're going to find themselves in a fight with the Most High and the Mashiach Yavashai. My hands shall cover thee. What did he say? My hands shall cover thee. So that thy children shall not see hell. Beautiful. That's why we got to teach our children right. We got to be right and teach the children right. To the best of our ability. Job 5 and 20. In famine he shall redeem thee from death, and in war from the power of the sword. Thou shalt be hid from the scores of the tongue, whatever they got to say. Neither shall thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. At destruction and famine thou shalt laugh. Neither shall thou be afraid of the beast of the earth. But thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field, and the beast of the field shall be at peace with thee. And thou shalt know that thy tabernacle, our body, shall be in peace. And thou shalt visit thy habitation and shall not sin. See, I mean, those that's keeping the commandments of the Most High. You're not going to be able to just start not sinning and think you're going to make it when you're sinning already. And all of a sudden, oh, I'll, just, I'll just wait until he comes. Then I'll just turn perfect. I don't think so. I don't think it's going to work like that, people. Better think again. And really think hard about it. <laughs> because this is serious. Real serious. Go to uh, Psalms 91 and 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So we're going to abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Mashiach was Yavashai. We're going to be in the secret place of the Most High. And we're going to abide under the shadow of Mashiach Yavashai, the Almighty. I will say of the Most High, He is my refuge and my fortress. My power in Him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His trust, excuse me, his truth, which is his law, statutes, commandments, Psalms 119, 142, shall be thy shield and buckler. Hear that? So all you that saying you got to follow the laws of the Most High, you ain't under the laws of the Most High, you're not going to have this protection. Shield and buckler is protection. His truth, which is his laws, Psalms 119, 142, his righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and that law is the truth. So, his laws and his commandments shall be thy shield and buckler, will be our protection. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night. Then you know it's going to be terror by night. You ready for that? It said, nor for the arrow that flies by day. The missile's going to be flying in the daytime. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes that noonday. You know, at noon. <laughs> he said night, day, and noon. Destruction is coming. So we want to be ready. We want to be with the Most High. He said, we messed up. Look at uh, Jeremiah 5 and 11. Just to bring a balance in. 
For the house of Israel, Jeremiah 5 and 11. In the house of Judah, all 12 tribes, northern tribes and southern tribes. For the house of Israel and the house of Judah have dealt very treacherously against me, said the Most High. They have belied the Most High and said, It is not he, neither shall evil come upon us. Neither shall we see sword nor famine. You know, that's... How are you going to stop the Most High from doing what he's going to do? But, this is our people. They said, even though everything that we say is going to the throne of the Most High, and they'll say it. I've heard them say it out of their mouth. The Most High said it. Look, look at Amos 9 and 10. Amos 9 and 10. All the sinners, those that transgress the Most High's laws, break the Most High's laws, statute of commandments, of my people who are the Israelites, shall die by the sword. Think of that way. We say the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. Ain't that what they're saying? Jeremiah 5 and 12. That's the answer to you. They have belly, belied the Most High and said, It is not he. He ain't there. Neither shall evil come upon us. Neither shall we see sword nor famine. And the prophet shall become wind. And the word is not in them. Thus shall it be done unto them. Wherefore thus said the most high power of hosts, power of armies, power of angels. Because ye speak this word, behold, I will make my words in thy mouth fire. And this people would. And it shall devour them. Hear that? He's going to make his word in his mouth fire. And the ones that are saying that it is not he, neither shall evil come upon us, neither shall we see sword nor famine. He said, Behold, I will make my words in thy mouth fire. And this people wood. What does fire do to wood? Burn it up. And it shall devour them. why we went through what we went through so many times and he always sent a redeemer to redeem us but we had to cry to the most high he's in bad shape go to Isaiah 62 in verse 8 the most high has sworn by his right hand the angel of the most high Mashiach Yavashah, and by the arm of his strength, surely I will no more give thy corn to be meat for thine enemies. For the one third, the elect of the twelve tribes of Israel, and the sons of the strangers shall not drink thy wine. They're not going to drink our wine for the which thou hast labored. But they that have gathered it shall eat it and praise the Most High. And they that have brought it together shall drink it in the courts of my holiness. Beautiful. You know it comes with the wine. One how it's going to be. You ever thought about how it's going to be? Wow. No, uh, undefiled, no no things that's foul going to be and it's going to be pure like we can't even imagine we got all these pesticides and everything you can think of worms, everything and whatever we eating now that's why you got to wash it off, look at the grapes they be, and the plums, they be gray got to wash them off real good really good says nobody going to take part in having our corn for meat for our enemies it's going to be all ours and the stranger is not going to drink our wine for which we have labor and we're going to labor our labor is their labor doing what they're going to do that we can have the best wine ever, ever made.
in the kingdom. Look at um, Isaiah 63 and verse 5. Uh, verse 4, it says, For the day of vengeance is in mine heart. He's talking about going into the land of Edom. When you, when you read the uh, Zion of Adam Combat Bible Dictionary, it says, Edom figures prominently in the prophetic scriptures as a scene of great future judgments. She's the only neighbor of the Israelites that's not given any promise of mercy from the Most High. It gives scriptures. Isaiah 34, 5 and 6. And Isaiah 63, where we at now, one down. So, here it is. Verse 5. And I looked, and there was none to help. And I wondered that there was none to uphold. Therefore, my own arm. Let's read verse 1. Who is this that cometh from Edom? Who is this arm? With dyed garments from Basra. This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Speaking in righteousness, meaning, did you keep the laws of the Most High? Did you keep the commandments of the Most High? I'm going to save those that did. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, and that garments like him that treadeth in the wine, wine fat, like stomping on grapes? This whole garment going to be full of blood. I have trodden the wine press alone, and other people there was none with me. For I will tread them in mine anger, and trample them in my fury. And their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments. And I will stain all my raiment. This is Mashiach Yavashai. Remember, he's not coming as a, he's not meeting him as a man. He told you that in Isaiah 47 and 3. He says, for the day of vengeance is in mine heart, is in his mind. And the year of my redeemed, the 12 tribes of Israel, one third, mind you, is come. And I looked, there was none to help. And I wondered that there was none to uphold. Therefore, my own arm brought salvation unto me. The Most High's own arm brought salvation unto himself. In my fury, my shadow shall come in the fury of the Most High, as the arm of the Most High, it upheld me. And I will tread down the people. So it's telling you it's a people in mine anger. And make them drunk in my fury. And I will bring down their strength to the earth. See. That's why when you look at Second Ezra's six and seven. Then answered I and said. What shall be the party in the sun of the times? When's going to be the time that we are now to the time of the next world? And when shall be the end of the first time that the, the times that we are now and the beginning of it that follow it? It's times to come. And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born, in Genesis 25, 25, and 26, of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. They were fighting in the womb. Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. For Esau is the end of the world. I mean, Esau would have to be ruling in the end of the world. And Jacob is the beginning of it that follower. See? Jacob is the beginning of it that follower. We got next. You understand? As the Israelites. In a righteous kingdom. So if you don't want that, then you'll be part of the destruction that he's coming, the vengeance that he's going to bring upon you. Look. Isaiah 63. Verse 8. He said, For I said, Surely they are my people, children that will not lie, so he was their savior. In all their affliction, he was afflicted. My shekel child was afflicted. 
And the angel of his presence saved them. You know, the angel of his presence, the angel of the most high's presence saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them. And he bare them and carried them all the days of old. But they repelled, re rebelled, like we done read. We rebelled and vexed his Holy Spirit. Vexed his angel of his presence. His Holy Spirit. Therefore he was turned to be their enemy. And he fought against them. That's why you look at. Uh, uh, James 4 and 4. This is really prevalent right now. People. Especially you've been introduced to the truth. And you've not had an opportunity to be. To learn righteousness. And you go back into the world. That's what it says. James 4 and 4. That's what we always have done. You adulterers. And adulteresses. Going out there messing with somebody else outside of your marriage. Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with the Most High? You have to make yourself be at war with the Most High. I mean, what else you, what else you have? You have the truth and you got the world. So you don't go to battle with the Most High? And people, it's amazing how people think, oh, he's rolling with me. But this is your consolation right now. After this, you finish. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of the Most High. You make yourself an enemy of the Most High by being a friend of the world. That's why he says, you vexed. Isaiah 63 and 10. But they rebel and vexed his Holy Spirit. Man. Therefore he was turned to be their enemy and he fought against them. You know, you look at a uh, a lot of times, you know, our people have their own mind of how they want to do things. And your whole your whole mind, so I say many are deceived by their own vain opinion. In Ecclesiastes 3.24. And an evil suspicion, they allow the devil come in and overthrow their judgment. The judgment that you have is evil, according to, thus say, the Most High. The orders of the Most High and how he have everything set up and what the scriptures are saying. That's what we have done all the time. That's why I say, verse 10. Isaiah 63 and 10, but they rebelled, a bunch of rebellious people, and vexed his Holy Spirit. I don't care how you think you're in the Spirit. You better be able to go into the Scripture and back up how you feel. Other than that, you're off. Point blank. But they rebelled and vexed his Holy Spirit. Therefore, he was turned to be their enemy, and he fought against them. You don't want the most high to fight against you, but if you only have the truth, you have the world. You choose life or death. Truth is life. The world is death. He's going to fight against you. You're going to see who's going to win. You think your arm's strong enough to fight against the Most High? We're going to find out. Then he remembered the days of old. Moses. And his people saying, Where is he that brought them up out of the sea with the shepherd of his flock? Where is he that put his Holy Spirit within him? That led them by the hand, right hand of Moses with his glorious arm dividing the water before them. His glorious arm dividing the water before them. We done went through that. We know that's the angel of the Most High. My the other side to make himself an everlasting name that led them through the deep or in horse in the wilderness that they should not stumble. As a beast goes down into the valley, the spirit of the Most High caused them to rest. The angel of the Most High calls him to rest. So does thou lead thy people to make thyself a glorious name. The Most High made himself a name. That's why when he come back and sit on my second side to judge and make war, he going to be all in all by the time he go through what he got to go through forever and ever and ever. Forever and ever and ever. Um, let's go from there. Let's go to uh, Jeremiah 21 and 5. Jeremiah, tw Jeremiah 21 and 5. 
So we and I myself will fight against you with an outstretched hand and with a strong arm, even in anger and in fury and in great wrath. And I will smite the inhabitants of this city, both man and beast. They shall die of a great pestilence. And afterwards, said the Most High, I will deliver Zedekiah, king of Judah, and his servants, and the people, and such as are left in this city from the pestilence, from the sword, and from the famine, into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and into the hand of their enemies, and into the hand of those that seek their life. And he shall smite them with the edge of the sword. Going to kill them. He shall not spare them. Neither have pity. Nor have mercy. See. And unto this people. Verse 8. Thou shalt say. Thus said the Most High. Behold I set before you the way of life. So I, I keep saying it over and over again. I set before you the way of life. You, got to, you set before us the way of life. And the way of death. Now, that's the choices we have. Choose life or death. And that death is being cast into the lake of fire for us right now. Most of us say, hey, we going into captivity, there's nothing you can do about it. Point blank. We fought, but the Most High fought against us because of our wickedness. Remember, the righteous and the wicked went into captivity. And the wicked always surpassed the righteous. Two-thirds of our people is a lot more than Matter of fact, it's double the one-third that's going to be redeemed. Jeremiah 32. And 17. Jeremiah 32 and 17. Oh, master, power, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm, and there is nothing too hard for thee. So how you make, you made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm, and there is nothing too hard for thee. So we know. Most High made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm. And we know that the Most High created all things by Hamashiach Yahushai, Ephesians 3 and 9. There's nothing that's not possible with the Most High. That's why Luke 1, 37. For the Most High, nothing shall be impossible. See? 